KLIP got clipped. Let's talk about dividend yield and diversification. Hey everybody, this is Bookies Revenge. We're back with another five-year, five-hundred-dollar account series episode. Uh, let me get my face minimized a little bit. Uh, today, I want to talk about dividend diversification. Uh, this is one of the questions the team had over the past week, and I just want to kind of elaborate on uh, breaking down the investment allocations a little bit further because we know that you know I'm putting seventy percent into investments, uh, passive income, and then thirty percent into speculative stuff. So. Uh, we kind of broke down the speculative stuff with some strategies, but we didn't really talk about the um, the the allocation portion of it just yet. So let me get my face down here. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, gonna try to put this on and hope. Okay, cool. So it's not covering all this stuff. So uh, if we just look top to bottom here, you you can see um, Johnson and Johnson is by far my biggest position as far as cash allocation goes. Uh, that is my number one investment position for growth and it offers that quarterly dividend. That's nice. Um, and it's just my number one commitment for right now. I have four shares, which isn't a whole lot. Uh, that means I'm only going to get 16 of the dividend payouts, um, per year. And that's four, four times a month or four times a year. I'm sorry. Uh, so 16 total payout equivalents, um, per year, which is fine, again, because this is a growth position. Uh, below that, you can see position size-wise, I have about that same amount, but split up into two different stocks, uh, same amount cash-wise. So here's about 637, here's about $650. So roughly the same amount uh, so far. Now these are high yield, high risk stocks. Um, they're a dividend ETF. So in this case, um, they will end up being smaller positions in relation to what I have for the other growth stocks. Uh, but for right now, I'm, I'm committing a little bit more up front because they're more aggressive positions. I want them to pay themselves off sooner. Um, so I'm, I'm putting more money into them sooner, even though they don't necessarily belong up here uh, long term. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It's, a, it's an aggressive strategy, so I'm putting money into an aggressive position early on. Um, and then once these each hit 100 shares each, I'm going to stop buying them. So I'm going to cap the position. <clears throat> Uh, and then below that, I have JEPQ, and I have O, and I have SCHD, Ladder, and Main. Those are the ones I want to focus on. Those are not speculative. So these are ones I'm going to hold for a long time. So if I pull up the spreadsheet over here, all right, and then I look at each of these. Okay, so Johnson & Johnson is a quarterly payout. Tesla's a monthly. Clip is a monthly. Okay. Um, now, if I look at these, I can see JEPQ is monthly, O is monthly, SCHD, it's a Schwab ETF that's quarterly and ladder is a quarterly, and then main is a monthly. So I've got um, I've got one, two, three uh, monthly ones, and then two quarterly. So, uh, and of course, Johnson & Johnson is the, the last quarterly. So I've got a good mix of monthly and quarterly payouts. I'm not looking to, you know, roll dividend payout dates and all that good stuff, which we certainly can, but that comes a little bit later. Um, and that's more to stabilize the income. It's not so much just to get the best payouts or the most effective payouts. So uh, if we look at the um, the positions here, right? So I've got six shares of JEPQ, three shares of O, two shares of Schwab ETF, uh, 10 shares of Ladder, two shares of Main. Okay, so if I go back and kind of put them in the list here, <clears throat> all right, uh, six, share, six shares of JEPQ, right? Now that's a monthly payout. So I want that one. It's got a higher yield. It's pretty nice. I like it. So this is, again, one I'm committing to relatively aggressively for what it is, but it's still a very conservative approach. I only have six shares. So every month, uh, I'll get six times whatever that dividend payout ends up being. Okay. And I also have three shares of O, which is the other monthly, right? I got J, ah, I'm sorry, JPQ and O and main. Those are my three monthly uh, and I got three quarterly. So just for the sake of keeping it simple, um, O and main is down here. I've got two shares of this for about a hundred bucks, 90 bucks. Um, well, it's $85 and then $5 unrealized profit. So for this one, I've got about $300 for this one. I've got about $150. Now I'm not including the real, uh, the unrealized P and here. I'm just talking about the initial investment. Uh, and then for main, I've got about $85 invested. So, um, those are pretty big considering uh, their monthly payouts, and I just want them kind of up front, but these will also take the back seat once the quarterly ones get um, more 
focus. All right. So once these once these are built up, the monthly ones, then I'll shift most of that money back over into the quarterly ones, build those up because they have the lower yields, um, less frequent yields, I should say. Uh, so while those are building up, the monthly ones are going to be making me more money. Um, but you can see I've got a, a clear hierarchy here uh, for the most part. And ladder is kind of the exception here. It's kind of a, it's more of a growth position or investment, in my opinion, uh, that just happens to offer a dividend. So I do like the position, which is why I bought 10 shares up front. Uh, otherwise, I would prefer to keep it lower than main because I want to keep all my dividend ones outperforming or, or I want to put most of my investment into the dividend stuff rather than the growth stuff. Um, but Johnson & Johnson's kind of both. Uh, it's got a relatively low yield, all things considered, but it will be a good yield for the account size when it gets up there. Um, ladder is more of a growth opportunity as well. So um, it's mostly just about your intention for the position. So if you just want to do high risk, high yield stuff, and you just want to do uh, Tesla and Clip really aggressively, you can do that. Um, whether or not that's sustainable long term or whether that's diversified enough to endure something like if the Chinese government cracks down on their internet, <laughs> um, you know, that's to be seen, which is why we diversify. And that's why this position here in Johnson & Johnson, the one I've done the most research on, and the one that I have the most confidence in, is the biggest position at all times. I want this to be my my shield, basically, against market volatility. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean that this one isn't volatile itself. You can see, you know, I've got some pretty big red numbers here and some pretty big green numbers. That's just the price doing that. Um, but most of this <clears throat> is just from these six positions. Um, you know, I don't do a lot of uh, speculation on this account yet. Uh, the Neo Leap is just kind of stagnant. It's just kind of hanging out around the, you know, plus 20, minus 20, plus 20, minus 20. It's just kind of hovering. Um, and then the rest of these speculation ones, I'm just waiting for them to recover. And then MDAI is, you know, it's up 45%, which is $2. So that's not going to affect, uh, you know, a $20 uh, green or red day much. So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still a little sick. Uh, so as far as how I diversify, uh, if I really just had to break it down into simple terms, I would say that I immediately take 70% of my contributions, put them into passive income. 30% goes to speculation. Then if we focus on that 70% for the investment side of things, I put the bulk of that into my number one spot. Um, and the reason I do that is, again, because the balance between that number one spot and the other positions which should offset it, um, should keep everything relatively balanced. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, I buy this one stock and then I can buy whatever I want and things will automatically balance out because that's not what happens. Um, but over time, I expect Johnson & Johnson to go up and I expect things like Tesla and Clip to go down. So they're, they're in equal sizes here, right? Remember, I've got about $650 invested in these. Now, you can see that uh, there's actually a little bit more because if I add these, you know, it's about $780 or something like that. Um, but that's okay because the contribution for this next month is going to go, uh, proportionally into each of these. And this will, uh, bring my cost basis down on these. And then when the price comes back up, this red number will be smaller and you guys will see it all work out. Uh, plus I'm getting dividends on these. So today, for example, clip, you can see it's, it's, uh, currently at negative 4270 unrealized P and L. But if I look at trading view, um, you can see that's because we had the dividend adjustment this morning. Uh, they announced 57 cents a share, I think. Um, so it dropped from 15.48 per share down to 14, 14.91 or something like that. So I'm um, not too worried about that, but that does affect this number here that we see. Uh, and again, that's the purpose of these. These are high yield dividend ETFs. So we expect the share price to drop um, and then eventually recover. And then we collect the dividend payout by that offset. So. Uh, these are not long-term, you know, buy it and it's going to go up 3,000% over time. Um, our goal is to DCA in as, as low as possible and as responsibly as possible in these and let the dividends take care of the rest. <laughs> so I'm um, not too worried about seeing these red numbers here. Um, and then as far as the rest of the positions here, I've just kind of got them balanced the same way. Like uh, JEPQ, for example, that's a monthly payout. So I've put about you know, 280 bucks in this one so far, right? And then if I combine, you know, if I look, if I look at the other ones here, um, I've got about 150 in O, I've got about 143 in Schwab, and then I've got about 113 or so. And I'm, I'm just taking this number and subtracting the open P and L from them to get those numbers. Um, but you can see, uh, just the balance, right? This balances these two. 
this balances this and maybe this, right? Because this is the way I plan to contribute to these. Um, JPQ and O are monthly, uh, SHD is quarterly. So I'm just kind of balancing them against each other. Um, now, if I took the total numbers here, right? If I look at it, the uh, the three quarterly, so Johnson & Johnson, let's, let's just do that really quick, actually. So if I took my Johnson & Johnson commitment, I'm going to move this off the screen and we'll push it back. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, we're going to exclude Johnson & Johnson, Tesla, and Clip because they kind of balance out, okay, um, for right now. <laughs> uh, so if I took the Johnson & or sorry, the JEPQ, so the JP Morgan ETF, uh, that total cost is 284.10, okay, so 284.10, and then I took the 49.47 for O, whoops, uh-oh, what have I done? <laughs> um, 49.47, I was in the wrong tab, and then I add the main, so 43.35. Okay, those three numbers get me 376.92. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to the calculator memory. And then, oh, I guess I can do it over here. Uh, now I'm going to add the Schwab and the ladder together. So 71.73 and then 11.37 because they were pretty, or I'm sorry, 113. Uh, using the wrong numbers here, I'm sorry. Uh, 143.46 for Schwab and then 113.70 for that. So 257.16. So if I subtract that memory recall here, um, the 119.76 is the difference between what I've committed to my monthly positions in comparison to my quarterly positions. So uh, my monthly positions have an advantage in the fact that they're bigger and they pay more frequently. So the quarterly ones are more quality. Uh, there's people that just invest in this one, for example, uh, and they do all right. But I want to build the monthly positions early so that they can pay me more effectively uh, during that same rate at which these are growing and paying themselves off. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. It's just a, a balance between the positions and their payouts um, in terms of effective yield. Um, payout schedule, obviously, is fun. And then the, um, the growth of the shares themselves. So hopefully uh, you guys can kind of see the correlation here. So Johnson & Johnson, biggest position, it's balanced against my riskiest positions by relatively equal amounts, okay? And you can, you can chalk that 119 off uh, to the difference between the drawdown on these guys if you want to. Um, just the numbers still work out pretty similar. <laughs> um, then I'm taking my monthlies, right? Right here. So JPQ, O, and main, what's left, right? Not the high yield ETF stuff. Um, and then I'm balancing those against my quarterlies. So these two quarterly positions here. Um, and they're higher, right? By about one position size. <laughs> okay. Uh, and again, the reason for that is I want this, this payout, this, uh, this yield hierarchy to, uh, to take place, right? So, as far as the best payout, it's going to be Johnson & Johnson's growth in comparison to the high-risk, high-yield ETF. So that's going to get me my most, uh, the most of my money from the bigger positions. Okay, that's why they're the top three for right now, until I cap them. Um, then I have um, the JEPQ, O, and Main kind of in second place. Now they're the more effective yields, uh, but they're not the best for growth, for long-term growth, Okay. Uh, doesn't mean they're the worst by any means. I love them all, but they're just not intended specifically for that. They're kind of a hybrid. And then I've got Schwab ETF and Ladder, which are more growth-oriented with less frequent payouts. So they're less effective payout, uh, but they're higher value potential. So that balances out with the lower um, growth potential of JPQ, O, and Main, uh, which favor consistency and frequency. Um, and then it's it's just a balancing act at that point. So it's pretty easy to uh, you know to to understand it once you get your head wrapped around it. But um, it really just depends on what your goals are, right? If I was again someone who was more aggressive, and you know maybe I wouldn't buy O. Oh, it's a cheap enough stock, and it pays monthly, and they've increased their dividends over the last like thirty years. But um, if I'm looking to just turn up an account, <laughs> I'm not really going to favor stability so much. It's um, but I'm also not going to be making consistent contributions and you know, balancing things the way I'm balancing them. So uh, if you're a more aggressive uh, investor, then maybe you go more for the growth stuff and maybe you go for the high yield stuff on smaller positions to keep that balanced. Uh, if you're more conservative, maybe you put more money into something that's less aggressive, such as O or, um, you know, Johnson & Johnson, something that has more consistency and stability. Uh, and then you balance that with a very, very small position in something higher risk, higher yield, um, or not at all. <laughs> Um, but either way, all these allotments are kind of contained to within that 70% investment per contribution category. 
and then the remaining 30%, I'm allowed to just completely destroy. I can just YOLO on Spy all day if I wanted to. Um, and I'll still be growing month over month, and that's what matters. So um, I don't want anyone to get too bogged down in the specifics, but I did want to break down the the concept behind diversification by yield so that it's not just, okay, I put 70% into something and 30% into something else every day, um, but where do I, you know, where do I actually buy things? Like, what do I invest in and why? So uh, you guys on the team, I know you guys all have different um, tickers that you're looking at, different companies with different parameters and different behaviors and things, and that's awesome. Um, I just want you guys to be aware that there are three things we should look at. Effective yield, um, the schedule, and the growth potential of the stock. So by effective yield, I mean how much they pay, how quarterly it is, or how uh, how frequent it is, and how um, how stable and how much of that is revenue and how much that's likely to, to remain stable. Or if it's aggressive and it's going to lead to share sell-off, that's okay too. Uh, just be aware of it. And then the... Um, the payout schedule obviously is for, you know, keeping things stable in your account and, uh, you know, just knowing when things are going to happen. Like clip, I knew was going to happen today. Uh, as soon as I saw that they declared dividend, I saw the price drop and I was like, oh, I'm not actually in pain. It just got adjusted for dividend. And you can see that on trading view, as opposed to if I look at, um, if I look at Weeble here, you can see it looks like it just sold off. And all we're seeing there is this red candle right here. We're not seeing this gap right here. <clears throat> so... In essence, what happened is the price was up here somewhere. Let me see what the actual price was, 1545-ish. Um, so the price was up here, all this stuff, right? All of this, right, was up higher. It was up here by this yellow line and above, uh, except for this little dip here was down below it. But um, all that happened is the price got adjusted down to there. So all the price data just moved down. It's not an actual loss. It's just a... Uh, an adjustment for the, the shares okay and i get those payments now so it, as far as my uh my worth my net worth here goes um i'm breaking even minus the sell-off so the sell-off here is actually caused by people selling but the adjustment from up here down to here is a market adjustment so that's just transferred into cash and i get paid later so uh, now that i have a clear picture of why i'm diversifying by yield and, and how i'm doing it specifically i know that this payout plus the tesla payout um, affecting the share price will be counterbalanced by Johnson & Johnson, which is an equal size, roughly. Um, so I don't have to worry about it. So it's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to end this episode here. I'm still a little bit sick, and i got a whole lot of work to do. i got to catch up on stuff. But uh, I just wanted to kind of break this down. I know it's more of a complex topic. Um, and if anything isn't clear enough in this video, I'm more than happy to make more. <clears throat> um, so feel free to keep asking questions and... Um, you know, just understand the purpose of doing things. Um, and anything you don't understand, just ask. So I'll catch you guys later. Thank you all and have a good week. Be safe.